Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Coach Carp here with Carp's Gym. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple offerings from Living.Fit or Living Fit. They have two offerings here. They have their Chrome multi-use barbell and their Cerakote multi-use barbell. Stay tuned because we're going to check them out. Welcome back. Now the owner of Living.Fit Jay Perkins reached out to me. He mentioned a barbell they had, a bench, some bumper plates, things like that. Looking at the website, there was only a few things that made sense for my channel. We talked a little bit about the barbells, the plates. He also had, I think he had the alpha dumbbells, some bands, and they had a nice bench that I'd like to get in here at some point. But at the time, I think they were sold out of the bench. So he did offer to send me the Cerakote barbell. But I told him I would really wanted to look at the Chrome barbell because it was their budget option. So I know if this barbell is okay, the upgraded Cerco version one is probably going to be okay as well. And then they end up sending me both. So I do have them to compare and contrast. And that's what I plan on doing today. There are some other living.fit barbell reviews out there. And most of them are the Cerco that we just mentioned. The current price on the website, I believe, is $199. So for $199, what do you get? 28 millimeter diameter bar with dual knurling marks with a medium, medium aggressive knurl. It's not really aggressive, it's just medium, which is kind of what you want in a multi-use bar. It has your weightlifting and powerlifting ring marks with a hard chrome shaft and hard chrome sleeves. Now inside the sleeves, on the sleeves, you'll notice that they are rib sleeves, but they're a very fine ribbing. They're not some of the big ribs you see on the other ones. So at first glance, they almost don't look ribbed, but they are ribbed. You can kind of hear that in there. And I'll give you a plate warning here in a second. We'll put some plates on there and let you see that. I'll throw a clip in or something like that. But they do have excellent spin. The inside is a combination of bearings and brass bushings. Now these are the needle bearings on the website. It does say ball bearings i think maybe that's a misprint or they a mistake some pliers and uh set of 30 weight ball bearings what it's all ball bearings nowadays i think it should say needle bearings because most all your ollie type bars and your bearing bars are going to have needle bearings it's eight needle bearings and two bash bushings so that's going to be four needle bearing cartridges per sleeve so four in this one and four in this one and they have excellent spin as of now when I first got these barbells in, I, they were the sleeves were very gummy, and they didn't want to really rotate well, which you wouldn't expect from a bearing bar. So I broke them, broke the sleeves down. I wanted to see the internal components as well, and these sleeves are very tightly packed. There's almost no slop in the sleeve side to side play. Upon breaking them down, what I found out they were very, very heavily greased. So it was almost like there was too much grease where. The bearings and bushings could not roll. A good, a good amount of grease is fine, and that's what you want on the, on the wear points. But when you over-grease something, it has a tendency to lock something up where it can't spin freely. And when I first got it, that's what happened. After upon breaking it down, wiping some of that grease down there, and then kind of reapplying grease on the rub points, and it's, it rubs, runs very smooth. So if you get a bearing bar in, this one or any other one, and you feel like it doesn't move or doesn't spin at all, there may be something in there causing a problem and on, normally on an import bar what you'll see is you break that down you'll see rust and things like that I didn't have any problem with that on this the coating and everything was awesome when I got it I figured that might be the case in there but internally there was no there was no rust or any kind of damage it was just a thick amount of that white and blue grease and I'll show you some clips and, and videos of that but once I got the once I got that cleaned off it spins awesome it spins great here just you know, just moving it with your hands and it even, spins even better with a plate on it. I'll show you some clips and B-rolls of that as well. The last several months I've been doing a strongman prep, so I didn't get to incorporate it in that like I would normally do in my normal powerlifting training, primarily using axle bars and things like that. But on my deadlift days, I did use this several times to kind of get a feel for it. And this 28 millimeter diameter, which is what you'll see on a lot of Ollie bars and some Multi-use bars, some are going to be 28.5 millimeter, and then your standard power bar is normally 29 millimeter. There are some 28.5s out there, but most of them are 29 millimeter. 
So this one does have a little, a little bit thinner feel, but it does feel good in hands. Where it really shines is a lot of those like CrossFit type movements, barbell cycling where you're going to do multiple things. Like you're going to do, you know, you're going to do like clean presses, back squats, front squats, all in some type of cycle for conditioning. It's usually lighter weight. And then the, the rotation of the ball really helps on all the different kind of movements. I even tried it for some of those and it worked well for me, you know, doing doing some barbell cycling, power cleans and things like that, um, hang cleans. So it's awesome for stuff like that. And awesome, I think, as a budget deadlift bar. I really didn't like it much for like bench press uh, or squatting as much. I felt like there was a little bit of whip and sting, but it's not, it's not made to do that primarily. It's made to be able to do all those things, put it kind of like a jack of all trades, which I think it does qualify for there. And then talking to the owner, Jay Perkins, he said they were kind of marketing this as like a like a Rogo High Bar or even more more closer to like a Rep Colorado Bar, which is their multi-use bar. And after going to Home Gym Con and getting to see those bars up close, I mean, it's very close. Rep has a few minor, a few minor details that are different, like the, the engraved inner sleeves and stuff like that. But I think it's very comparable. I went to my local sporting goods store to see kind of what the other barbells were going for. And they have the cheapo barbells with a 700 pound weight capacity. And they're like $189. And you're looking at this one, it's like $10 more for actual real, for a real manufactured barbell with bearings. They even had one, I think that was a 1200 pound weight capacity, but it was like a 33 millimeter diameter for like 189 or 209. And that's just a cheap bar. They're making that diameter thicker so, so it can hold that weight. But this one has a 1500 pound weight capacity at a 28 millimeter. So you shouldn't see any issues with as far as the weight capacity, how much weight you can get on it. I typically like a barbell that has a more aggressive knurling. And even in my mixed use bars, I like to have something with a center knurling, even if it's a passive center knurling. I'll tell you, you know, I'm more of a power lifter. I like an aggressive knurling. But of all the 18 to 20 bars we've got over here, this was my wife's favorite bar. She had her pick of any bar. And this is the one she went and grabbed. She liked the feel of it. She liked the knurling. And she doesn't like, she doesn't typically like a women's bar. She doesn't like a 25 millimeter or like a, a Rogue Bella bar or some of these other bars that are out there that are really popular that sell well. She doesn't like a barbell that's that thin. So normally she'll just grab a regular power bar if we're going to do something like bench press or any type of workout. And then if it's super aggressive, she'll wear gloves or something if she needs to. But on like a bar like this with a medium neural, it's a medium grippy, it's kind of a sandpapery neural. She doesn't need to wear gloves or anything, and she's not worried about tearing up her hands. So this one had the best feel to her. So I feel like there's a lot of women out there that are going to have that same impression that would really like it. If you're a woman or female out there, or you do a lot of CrossFit, ollie lifting type workouts, this is a good value bar. And then the Cerakote, it's basically just a little bit more. Um, and the Cerakote... It's basically for corrosion. One thing I didn't like about the Cerakote barbell is the sleeves. The sleeves show a lot of wear. I use primarily iron plates. It's not as bad with the bumper plates and stuff that I have, but with the iron plates, you're going to get those ring marks and scrapes and everything off there. Mine's already even got a little bit of rust on it, but that's from the plates scuffing the coating, where the shaft looks pretty good. And then this one is more of a slick center in the shaft, where... The Cerakote bar has a more chalky feel in the middle, and that's probably due to the Cerakote. I weighed them both. They have a 1% tolerance warranty, so if your bar is out of spec or doesn't weigh the same, doesn't weigh what it's supposed to, they will replace it, and they have a limited lifetime warranty. But that does, that is only for the first owner. So if you ever sell it, that does not transfer or anything like that. But if something was wrong with the bar, it shows up having any kind of defects, they will replace it. Anytime, they, anytime a company offers a lifetime warranty, you know, they're probably going to stand behind their product. I think that's what they do here. Things I would change about it. In a mixed-use barbell, you got to have you got to have the dual knurling marks, which I love. The tight tolerances are awesome, but what change is I would do a center knurling, offer it in a 28.5 millimeter shaft instead of a 28, because I think 28 is a little thin. And there are other bars on the market that offer that, that have dual-purpose rings and a center knurl. Think of something like the the Rogue Hybrid Bar. That's a power bar, but there's something like the the Rogue B&R Bar. 
or the starting strength bar. Those are multi-use bars that you can use for cleans. They're not really intended for ollie lifts per se, but you can do things like cleans and some, some overhead movements and stuff like that. Barbell cycling, rows and all that, you should be fine with that. So I like to have a mixed use bar. And then this one, it has way more spin than like a Rogo Heil bar or something like that because those are primarily just bushings or this one has the bearings as well. I know they're trying to compare it to a Colorado bar or high bar, but to me, it sits more in that fringe wonder bar with bearings type of that fringe wonder bar or even a rogue training bar because it has an excellent spin. The only thing I've seen with better spin than this right out of the box and with these bearings, it's probably like the fringe bomba bar or possibly even the rogue ollie bar. I mean, it's, but it's like a $700 bar. So if you're into those kind of lifts, you do any kind of ollie lifting and you want a 28 millimeter, this would be a good Olympic training bar for you. It's got a good amount of whip, but it's not too whippy. And it also has a good medium knurling, so you're not going to tear up your hands too much. If you're going to do things like hook grip and all that, I mean, it's not going to destroy your hands. It takes chalk really well. You know, if you need to get the chalk off, it just comes right off with like a, you can see some, there's some, there's some black from the Jacobs right there. Rubs off with like a microfiber cloth or something like Barbell Rescue. So would I recommend this bar for this price point? Yes. Not necessarily for anybody that's into powerlifting, but if you're a general enthusiast and you want a barbell that will do a little bit of everything, this is a quality bar. It's better than the cheapo bars that they sell at sporting goods stores. It's up there on par with those rep, fringe, and other bars that are on the market that are well known. It is imported, but they've done a really good job with it because the sleeves are tight. And one thing I didn't, forgot to mention is there's a chamfer on the end of the barbell sleeve. It makes it easier to get your plates on and off. So that's another thing that I really like about it. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, this or the Cerakote here in Tennessee. This chrome has done fine for me. I thought it would rust more than it has. I've actually got more rust on the Cerakote version because it's where the sleeves are getting scuffed up. The shaft looks fine, but the sleeves where the plates go on and off, it's, it's scraping off that coating. And you'll see the ring mark. And it does make a little bit of noise, especially with the iron plates going on and off with the rib sleeves. But other than that, I mean, that's par for the course. That's what you're going to get with any barbell. I would highly recommend it. I have no skin in the game. I'm not affiliated with them. They're not paying me. But they did send this barbell to me for free, and I think it's a good value. I wouldn't mind having it. And like I said, my wife likes it. So if you have you know, younger kids that need a medium neural bar that's multi-use, or your wife's looking for a bar, right now they have the two options. But hopefully down the road they come out with a power bar or a, another type of hybrid bar with a center knurling. Because I think if you're going to multi-use, should have a center knurling, even if it's a lighter center knurling. You know, it could be, even, it could be a medium passive center knurling. Similar to like the Rogue Ali bar, the Pyros bar, some of those bars out there. Even the uh, the BNR bar, like I mentioned before, it has it has the powerlifting ring marks, weightlifting ring marks, and a center neural. I knew they're going to send me the barbells, but a couple other things they did include that just showed up were these Living Fit collars. Now I thought they were included with the barbells, but apparently it's an add-on that you can get on the website. These are like a lock jaw style design, and they are some of the better budget collars I've seen. They do work on my axle bars and my regular barbells. So I do like them. I do have some other cheapos that look similar to this, but these are better quality than the cheap generic or Amazon ones that I do have. And, you know, these have the living fit on there, has the branding right there. And they just seem to be a better, well-constructed. The plastic seems to be a little better material and the rubber inserts. So I do like these. I think they're about $30 on the website. So they are a decent collar if you need a budget collar. Uh, they may run those on sale, different things, but they're not they're not a bad collar. So I, I do like those collars. And and they also sent me a couple pairs of their bands. Now these are really nice bands. I like these so much, I end up keeping mine and donating my other ones. So you'll notice that these are like a latex style band, but there's no seams. There's no but there's no seams in the bands. Where a lot of bands, what will happen is they'll take the bake seams and then weld them together. And then this one is not like that. So it's a much more durable band. So I ended up keeping these and donating my other ones that I have. So now I have all Living Fit bands back here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if I missed anything down in the comments or you have any questions. Thanks for watching and go 
lift. Barbells. There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Do 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 do.